Hello, today I'm building in Glimmerbrook because I found a reference picture on Pinterest and it looked very magical and beautiful and it felt very Glimmerbrook like needed. <laughs> like it needed to be in Glimmerbrook. And so I'm building it here. I'll pull up the reference picture in a little bit because the shape is um mostly just like in like inspired by the picture that I had found. And it's from Ethan Davies.jpg. I found their Instagram account. So I'll have that linked in the description and maybe a pinned comment if I remember both when I post the video. Um but yeah I feel like I remember Pinterest leading me to their art station um account. And that's kind of like what I was going to link. And then Pinterest is weird. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> and now it's like I can't find it again. So I'll either go in my history and I'll link that as well. But yeah, I'm looking at the Instagram and I will bring up the picture right now. Here it is. Um, it looks very magical and I really liked it. Um, I felt a little nervous when I was going to start this though because I don't really do exteriors like this. The shape scared me a little bit, but also the fact that it was very light and it was like white walls and a lot of green. And I haven't really done that in a very long time. <laughs> so I was a little bit worried, but I think with my reshade, it kind of helped to capture the vibe that I wanted to go for. I didn't really like take too much inspiration from the landscape um at first i was thinking that i would want to put a bridge but i didn't think this lot was large enough for that and so i pretty much just put some ponds around and a dirt path that leads to the house which like there's water on either side so it kind of like emulates the look of like the landscape in the original art but not entirely. Um, so yeah, I really like, I ended up really happy with how it came out and I haven't really like used this sort of wall before, that texture that's on the main part of it, though, on the like the main octagonal part of the house, I think. Um, yeah, I've never used that plain wall before and I was realizing that um, I don't really use it because it feels a little bit plain and like, not very detailed compared to some of the other um, wallpapers that I normally use, but I started using some of the basement kit wall marks on it and it helped to break it up a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting so that it wasn't just like a blank um, white wall, which I guess even in the reference picture, it looks like there's some tears in that original texture and you could kind of see some of the stone and brick that is underneath of it. And so I really like that anyway. <laughs> and so I made sure to like add a bunch of that because I really like distressed looks in my builds. And yeah, so here's the landscape. I just like, I wasn't going to do a full bridge. <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. And I feel like this was sort of like the better option to do if I wasn't going to look and debug and bring out a whole bridge and yeah I like how it came out I feel like it could be really cute to watch your sim walk down the path um even though sims don't tend to follow the paths that we lay out in the game but I feel like they should because it is a dirt path and I think sims are supposed to follow terrain paint that you place on the lot um I could be misremembering that and it is also built in fall it's a little bit less vibrant than some of my more recent fall builds that I've been doing. Um, so like last week's, it had a lot of bright um, yellows and stuff. And this, it feels very toned down. Um, the yellow trees are more like a greenish yellow. Like the leaves are just starting to turn color. And the reds are very dark and almost like a burgundy color. And I really like that. The entire like lot, it feels a little bit darker. I did it in partly cloudy weather because it's really hard to find good lighting in Glimmerbrook. Um, I always struggle with it, and so I usually tend to, like, not build in it as often. But I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with, like, cheating the time of day and knowing which weather I want. And I think I would have liked this to have been a little bit more lit up and a little bit more sunny. But I'd have to, like, stop it at a perfect time in between the weather changing from like um 
cloudy to like partly cloudy because I didn't want it fully partly cloudy because that's too bright. So it was <laughs> it was a whole thing. But yeah, I do that using MCCC. I think that's the correct number of C's. Every time I say it, I think about Siren Witch laughing at me <laughs> for like really trying to think too hard on what it's called because I can never remember how many C's are in that. But anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> And I was really surprised with how well the roof came out. I think that that was the part I was like, okay, if you can't get the roof down, uh, you're going to have to just bulldoze the entire lot because I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and it ended up working out really well. I didn't comment on it as I was doing it because I guess I was talking about something else. But I used two round roof pieces, one on the upper level, and I had to size the walls in a little bit to make it fit perfectly. And then the other one is just the smaller version of that. And to connect like the front part of the build to the like back part a little bit, I added another um, roof piece that kind of like um, blended the two together and it worked out really well. So there's only three roof pieces in this and I really like how it ended up coming out. <laughs> and yeah, I use a lot of debug and live edit objects when i'm doing my landscapes i also add some ducks i always forget that i can use these sorts of things so i guess i opened the menu and i was like oh these are here <laughs> so i added a little duck spawn and i added some fireflies around so if i can remember i'll take a the intro video of this while the fireflies are out and so I'll have to mess around with the lighting a little bit because I haven't recorded that yet. I'm like doing this kind of late. It's Saturday and I post these on Monday. So I'm kind of having to do everything in the next couple of days when I usually have it done by now. But um, I haven't been feeling the best. <laughs> so I pushed it off until I was feeling more capable of talking into a mic for 20 minutes without feeling weird and awkward. Because <laughs> sometimes it does feel that way if I'm like my mood's a little bit down. I don't want to like force um, a voiceover because then I feel like uh, I'd be suffering through it. <laughs> and I feel like it might like come through in like my energy and stuff and be a little bit different from like what you're used to seeing, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, now I'm doing the floor plan of this and I really wanted to use this odd space over here because I didn't want it to just be empty and I decided to do that by finding a shelf sort of thing that worked but nothing really was working in the shelf category so I went into the exterior detail section and I'm using these sorts of little things that I think are usually used underneath roof pieces to kind of add a little bit more detail and so I did that with this instead and I put a bunch of clutter on it and stuff after but right now pretty much all I'm doing is Kind of doing the floor plan, I've been like splitting up my videos into chapters lately, and lately has probably only been the last one or two. <laughs> and so this whole part would be the floor plan because I'm not really decorating each room, even though I'm putting some items in. These items are mostly just to figure out the whole floor plan of the house because once you get the kitchen done everything else kind of comes together because you could like squeeze a dining room table and you could take away chairs and you could like mess around with stuff like that but for a kitchen you really need enough space to have like somewhere to cook the um the fridge and the stove <laughs> i don't know why it took me so long to figure out the words for those i don't know what's going on um spoiler this isn't a spoiler i don't know why i'm saying it's a spoiler but um a behind the scenes info <laughs> is that i had to re-record this entire voiceover <laughs> so i sometimes forget what i'm talking about um because normally i have my mic like further away from my pc and i'm talking a little bit back um and for some reason, I'm like, oh, I could be directly next to my PC that's super loud. And when I finished it and I put it all together, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's an annoying noise that's happening every time I speak because noise cancellation apparently only cancels it out so much um, if you're super close to it. And it doesn't cancel it out when the mic is open, when you're actually speaking into it. But when the mic's closed, when you're not speaking into it, it doesn't pick it up. Um... <laughs> that, that that's the whole story <laughs> um but yeah now i'm doing the bedroom 
and I used the same wallpaper that I used outside. I guess it's almost like a plaster um, looking thing. I don't usually use that, but because I was using the wall details and stuff, it ended up feeling less like cold and less um, uh, like blank because I'm not one to really use a lot of wall art. I use it occasionally and I use like a little bit here and there like I am in this room like there's two. Um, because it gets repetitive for me <laughs> and I never know what to use so I'm like for some reason paintings are like the one thing where I don't like using the same ones all the time even if they're different builds because I get bored of seeing it and so I don't really do it very often but I don't get bored of wall cracks. <laughs> I use jungle adventure wall crack in this room and I use the basement kit wall marks that are like kind of new now that shows like the brick underneath and stuff. It's the same ones I used on the exterior, but just in the interior. And I believe I used this wallpaper throughout the entire house and I just used wall marks to kind of like break it up a little bit. But yeah, I really like how the bedroom turned out. It feels like it follows a certain like color scheme. Like there's the blues and oranges and stuff. And I'm trying to pay attention to the lighting because um, Mossy Sim had posted, like, <laughs> demanding me to tell her how I give my builds the glow that they have. But I guess it's only some of them, because I don't know if this one would have that glow that she's talking <laughs> about. Because uh, normally I have, like, very dark rooms and not a lot of windows. And so I think that the candle glow is a lot more intense in those sorts of builds because I always forget windows a lot of the time so most rooms will have like one tiny window somewhere um but yeah <laughs> and now I'm doing like a little painting studio area because I figured like I don't know this was screaming painter to me for some reason and I piled up some um plants just in front of the window so it seems like the owner is kind of just like trying to create enough sunlight for their plants and they don't really care about the plants as decoration and they more care about it as taking care of it and so they have just like them scattered around the window in the um staircase area and they have like the tools that they could water the plants and take care of them and stuff because i think that like that's more realistic than having plants in spaces where there's no window. Like that giant plant in the bathroom would get no sunlight. Um, Cause like my plants in my room, I just kind of like have them blocking most of my window and I've repotted them recently. And so they're two giant pots now for them to grow a little bit bigger. And I've noticed that now my room's a lot darker because I have two giant plants just blocking some of the sun. So I guess that happens for this person living here too. Um, but yeah, I think the upstairs is pretty much done now. This is only a one bedroom and one and a half bath. So the upstairs bathroom it has a little bathtub, but the downstairs area just has a sink and a toilet. And it felt like, I feel like the space was used pretty well for this build. I was surprised because it is an odd shape. So there's definitely weird corners everywhere. But I think it's all right. Some of the corners I kind of just cut off. Like in the dining room, I just put a bookcase in front of one of them. So it doesn't really use the space. But most of the other ones are used fairly well, I think. And I never get to use this um, this fireplace. The word wouldn't come to me. <laughs> And that one's from Cats and Dogs because I always use the Cottage Living one, but I'm sure you've had seen before that I try to use it. It just like, it was an awkward space and it looked a little bit funny. And this one kind of fit perfectly in it because it was only two tiles where the other one was three tiles. Even sized down, um, it didn't work. <laughs> so this one worked better. And I put a bunch of empty plant pots around because I felt like, I'm like, yeah, this person, they love gardening. They love painting, and so I was trying to, like, bring those little two hobbies throughout the build a little bit. Like, I put a painting area in the dining room. It's just, like, a base game. It's, like, under sculptures, and it's, like, a little cart that has different paint on it and stuff. Because I figured, I'm like, they'd like to paint in the dining room, I think. <laughs> but yeah, here, I'm, like, blocking that little piece, even though originally I didn't want to block any of the space. It just wasn't working 
And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just going to put a bookcase here. I never use that bookcase either. I, that might be one of my first times using that bookcase. I guess it spoke to me because I'm do I'm using swatches that I don't normally use because I usually build with like very dark tones and it's always like the darker wood. And this is all the light wood. And some swatches, they just like the wood, like the darker wood looks a little bit too orange. And I don't like that in most of my builds. And this, I guess, like this specific book case, the lighter swatch ended up looking really nice. But I'll definitely try and see what the other ones are like and maybe use them because I like the clock inside of it. Um, yeah, the dining room, I put a lot more clutter in here than I did with the other rooms, just because I had all these shelves. <laughs> and originally I thought that the kitchen was the most cluttered because I had those little pantry areas, but they're pretty small and you can't really see them very well. So I definitely think the dining room is the most decorated, even though I felt like this was me being a little bit lazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just going to throw these items around. Um, but I think I picked out a good variety of stuff. And I remember I placed down some dishes because I forgot that we have dishes in the game. We have them in like Snowy Escape and we also have them in the new Horse Ranch pack. But I have not used the Horse Ranch ones yet. But yeah, here I guess I'm putting more wall art in. This is like a big thing for me. I usually don't put that much wall art in. <laughs> I put three. I think this build has five pieces of wall art. And I'm like bragging about how I'm actually using it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm using different cow counters to the cabinets um, because I feel like I really like the way the horse ranch cabinets, the horse ranch counters look with the base game, more like industrial, um, <laughs> industrial, what are those called? Cabinets. I keep getting cabinets and counters mixed up, but yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> now I'm just doing all the clutter for the pantry and I'm mostly just pulling out stuff that looks cottagey and anything that I think is really cute. I end up changing the color swatch for the things I'm using as shelves because I thought that the white was a little bit too bright and it didn't work out very well. And so I changed it to a lighter wood that kind of matches most of the other furniture that I've been using in the house. And I have to use tool for most of this part because like I didn't want things floating. I didn't want things um, going into the shelf. And because these are such weird shaped shelves that have a curve, a lot of the items would kind of clip into the top if they were too tall and stuff. So I have to size things down and then I have to use tool to kind of lower them around. And I feel like the last thing that I always do when I'm decorating a kitchen is I just sort by the country kitchen pack because it feels like so easy. I'm like, I could get the bulk of this clutter done by just searching through there. And I really liked the white pumpkin next to the, it's like a, it's a, um, not a horse treat. It's like a llama and cow treat, I think. Um, it's like a pumpkin one. And I felt like it looked really cute next to it. So I add some of those, I add some bags of sugar around and just little bottles and some wine. And I feel like it really, it feels realistic. <laughs> you wouldn't really have open sugar just sitting out in your pantry like that. But I did like this little pantry idea because I like when people do pantries, but it just takes up a lot of time. But it worked for this one because I didn't know what else to do with that space. And that's pretty much the whole video. I now am on the exterior and I'm just putting little details out here like a bench and some planters. And I had some candles and I was originally going to like um, light up the place with these. So it was like really nice at night, but it just I don't like too many um objects being seen while i'm looking at it in the daytime and so every time i do a really pretty at night and i turn on i don't turn on the sun <laughs> this is the second time i said that um when i turn when i change the lighting <laughs> to daytime um i don't like how like busy it looks and so i didn't even <laughs> i like gave up after putting like a few candles down but yeah that's the whole video Thank you for watching. You could find me on Instagram and stuff like that. My socials are all below. But yeah, thank you. Bye.